Hello fellow scientists, it's Justin here again and I've got another problem that I'm hoping you can help me with. So I left my little baby sister alone for exactly two minutes and somehow in that time she managed to almost completely fill her sippy cup up with sand and salt. Ugh, I can't let her drink that. But how do we get all the yucky stuff out of the water that she's supposed to be drinking? Well, to solve this problem, it sounds like we're going to need to investigate mixtures and solutions. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to tell the difference between mixtures and solutions, and describe some different ways of separating mixtures. Let's get into it! A mixture is a combination of two or more different substances that each keep their identities. For instance, whenever you combine cereal and milk, you're making a mixture. And you can also clearly see that the cereal and milk keep their identities. They're still cereal and milk. The same goes for when you combine peas and carrots, nuts and dried fruit, and nickels, dimes, and pennies. These are all mixtures. Just Please don't eat that last one, please. So what my sister was doing was creating a mixture in her sippy cup. She's a little scientific genius. Can you think of any other kinds of mixtures? Pause the video here and jot down your ideas in your guided notes. There are also different kinds of mixtures. For instance, what's the difference between this mixture of lemons and sugar in this mixture of lemons and sugar. In this mixture, the lemonade, you can't see the individual substances that were combined to make it. And that's because lemonade is a solution. A solution is a type of mixture in which the substances are evenly distributed or spread throughout it. We can't just reach in and pull out just lemon juice or just sugar the way we can with some other mixtures. Some other examples of solutions include sparkling water, which is a mixture of water and carbon dioxide, or chocolate milk, which is a mixture of, well, chocolate and milk. Solutions are often made using different substances that are in the same state of matter like food coloring in water. But you can also make a solution out of a solid and a liquid. Remember in a previous lesson about the physical properties of matter, we learned about solubility, which is the ability for matter to dissolve into other substances. Well, when a solid dissolves into a liquid, you get a solution. The solid that is dissolving is called the solute and the liquid that the solid is dissolving into is called the solvent. Take salt water, for instance. Salt water is created when salt is dissolved into water. In this case, salt is the solute, or the substance that dissolves. Water is the solvent, or the substance that does the dissolving, and salt water is the solution. Try one for yourself. If you combine hot cocoa mix with milk, what's the solute and what's the solvent? Pause the video here to write down your answer in your guided notes. Solutions don't even have to be in the liquid state. There are solid solutions, like the copper and zinc solution that makes up brass. And there are gas solutions too, like the mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide that makes up our atmosphere. So, a mixture is a combination of different substances that each keep their identities. And a solution is a mixture in which the different substances are evenly distributed throughout it. But... What happens when we don't want the mixture to be a mixture anymore? Like with that sandy, salty, sippy cup full of water that my sister made. Can I even separate out all the different substances to bring them back to the way they were before? Well, some mixtures can be separated pretty easily. 
like, say, a fruit salad. If you wanted to separate that, you could just take your fingers and pluck out all the different kinds of fruit and separate them that way. It'd take forever, but it's easy. However, not all mixtures can be separated so simply. When that's the case, we can use the physical properties of matter to separate them. For instance, if substances in a mixture are different sizes, we can use a sieve or a sifter to separate them, like with this mixture of sand and gravel. The small pieces of sand will fall through the holes, and the larger pieces of gravel don't, separating the two. Similarly, we can use a process called filtration to separate solids and liquids. The liquids will move through the filter, but the solids cannot. You might see this process being used when your parents filter coffee grounds from their liquid coffee, or when noodles are separated from the water they were cooking in. We can also use physical properties like magnetism to separate mixtures. For example, how do you think we could separate a mixture of sand and iron filings? Sure, we could use a magnet to attract all the little bits of iron, leaving the sand behind. So far, all of our examples have been mixtures, but not solutions. Solutions are usually much more difficult to separate than other kinds of mixtures, but they're not impossible. One of the most useful physical properties to know when we're trying to separate a solution is the boiling point of each of the substances. For example, let's say we have a solution of water with solid sugar dissolved into it. We could just boil the whole thing on the stove. Water's boiling point is much lower than that of sugar, so the water will evaporate, leaving solid sugar behind. Also, you should know that some solutions will require more than one step to completely separate. And uh, I think that's probably what's gonna happen with my sister's water mixture. Now that you know more about separating mixtures and solutions, how would you separate a mixture of sand, salt, and water? Pause the video here and jot down some ideas in your guided notes. I think I'm going to start by taking the sand out first. I know that I can separate a solid from a liquid by using filtration, so I'll pour the whole thing through a filter, and that should separate the sand. All right, great, one substance down. But now we got to figure out how to separate the salt from the water. Huh, why don't I just boil it? The water will evaporate, separating it from the salt. Woo, we did it. We've completely separated my sister's yucky water mixture. Now that we've solved that problem, let's review everything we've learned today. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances that keep their identities. A solution is a type of mixture in which the substances are evenly distributed throughout. We can separate mixtures and solutions by using our knowledge of the physical properties of the substances that have been mixed. To learn more about mixtures and substances and how to separate them, be sure to check out the activities and practice games for this lesson. You know, I am super glad that we learned as much as we did about mixtures and solutions today, but I think next time this happens, I'm just gonna get my sister a new cup of water. Thank you so much for joining me today, and remember, science is all around us. See you next time.